All right, we're going over AB2, the limit review worksheet. Okay, let's see how quickly we can do this. Did you guys actually try it? Yep. Yeah? Yeah, I did. Take the fifth. I kind of laughed when I just did Okay, so remember now, the test is on Tuesday. Do I have to write it on the board? Are you guys going to forget it? Because I don't see you on Monday, right? A, B, the test is on Tuesday. And then, how much time do we have on Tuesday? We've got an F schedule. So 50 minutes. Okay, so you're going to have 50 minutes to do a 40 minute test. So it should be... Is that the end of the day? At the end of the day, you're another day older. <laughs> yes, three and four at the end of the day. Okay, number one, we've got a whole bunch of limit problems. Are we getting better at this? Yeah. Okay, the limit is x to zero, so I have zero over zero. It's indeterminate, so I need to simplify now. Are you guys, what are you guys doing with 2x plus x, two plus x quantity cubed? Okay, I don't care what you do, but are you using the formula? Like a cubed plus 3a squared b plus 3ab squared plus b cubed. Are you guys doing that? Yeah. See? So what's the hard part? It's algebra, it's not calculus. Minus 2 cubed all over x. Hey, this is a different quotient. Cancel it out. See, but see, this is the problem. This is what you guys do. You guys just copy what I have up here, and then what's going to happen when you got to do it for real on your own on the test? Pain. That's what's going to happen. All over x. The x's cancel out. Now can I plug in 0 for x and get something? Yeah, what's 12 plus 0 plus 0? 12 plus 0. See? OK. Uh, the next problem, I see 0 over 0, but I see radicals. So what? I'm going to write 3 instead of root 9. I'm just going to write 3. What do I do when you get radicals in an indeterminate form? You multiply top and bottom by the conjugate. Okay, so if you multiply out the top, you're going to get 9 plus x minus 9. Oh, but the 9's cancel out. The x's cancel out, so you just get 1. Now, can I plug in 0 for x and get something? Yeah, you're going to get 1 over the square root of 9, which is 3. 3 plus 3 is 6. Finished. Okay, C. Okay, this is the ones I think you guys can have prop the most problems on the test because you got to know your base graphs. Cotan inverse looks like this, correct? See, if I draw it for you, there's no way you can miss it. So what's the limit as x approaches, what does that say? Negative infinity. So as, as the graph is going out to the left, the y coordinates are getting closer to i. It's so easy when I draw the graph. Okay, now D. Every year I give this problem on the test and students get confused between tangent and tan inverse. Are you guys fooled by that? No. What does the graph of tangent look like? Yeah, that sounds like contact. You guys ever saw the movie Contact? What kind of time again? The alien. Jody Foster. She was an astronomer. The machine. machine. And then they had the radio telescopes aimed at the heavens, and they were getting funding, but their funding was running out. And just before all their money ran out, then they heard this thing. <laughs> and then. And if you counted the hectares, you had two, then three, then five, and then I said, oh, that's prime numbers right there. And it was prime numbers. <laughs> Nobody saw that? No. Okay, anyway, so if this keeps on going, what, ha what happens as the graph is moving out to the right? Is it get getting closer to something? No, the limit does not exist. What's the part? Can I write that on the test? What did I tell you guys? Yes. Yes, I will accept this. E, limit. <coughs> what is that spell? What is that? 
Or a chicken. either negative infinity or positive infinity. It's a 50-50 shot. How do you tell which one it is? You plug in a number very close to 3 on the left, like 2.999. 2.999 minus 7 is negative, and then anything squared is positive, right? Think about that. Negative divided by positive is negative, so the answer is negative infinity. F, limit x approaches infinity, x over natural log x. What happens when both the top and the bottom both go to infinity? Apple. So what is this? P polynomial. X to the first, x to the second, x to the third. They're all polynomial. What's that? No, oh, that's a logarithm. Which one goes to infinity faster? P. So therefore, the limit is, it rhymes with infinity. <laughs> oh my goodness. Is that what it takes? Limit, x approaches 2, x cubed minus 8, all over x minus 2. Well, if I plug in 2, you get 0 over 0. We simplify now. Have we learned our lesson? Yes. Do we know how to factor x cubed minus yes. 8 now? Can you just look at it and do this? Or are you doing synthetic division? <laughs> I don't care what you do. you got to get that or, because it's all or nothing on the test. You know? you, you're not going to get partial credit. Oh, you almost had it. These cancel out, now can I plug in 2? Yeah, you get 4 plus 4 plus 4. Wow. H, where's H? Okay, another one where you got to know, here, I'll just draw the base graph. Right? Here's the graph of natural log x. What is the limit as x approaches 0 from the right? So coming from the right, the whoosh, negative infinity. Here's the part, that's like the third or fourth time you gave us that one. Because that's an important one. All right, limit x approaches 1. Okay, now I'm not going to write this down, but if I plug in 1, you get 0 over 0. So that means you need to simplify. Now, just to save time, did you guys synthetically divide the top? Yeah. And what, what did you get on the top? x minus 1, x minus 2, x minus 3. But some of you just copying it down now, yeah? All over x minus 1, x plus 1. And then, now can I plug in 1 and get something? Yes. Yeah, negative 1 times negative 2 all over 2, which is equal to, rhymes with bun. <laughs> That's so sad. Yeah. X approaches infinity, x to the 7 over e to the x. Okay, again, both the top and the bottom are both going to infinity. How do I figure out which one is going to infinity <coughs> faster? Apple. Apple. What's that? Polynomial. What's that? Exponential. Exponential. Which one goes faster to infinity? Exponential. So if the bottom is growing faster than the top, the limit is? Zero. Zero. See, we're getting the hang of it, right? And inverse. Square root. 3x squared plus 4x plus 5. All over x squared plus 2x plus 3. Okay, now, if you just look at that right there, what does that go to as x approaches infinity? If the power on the top and the bottom are the same, you look at the coefficients. So that gets closer and closer to 3. Therefore, the whole thing is getting closer and closer to tan inverse of radical 3, which is a number I'm supposed to know. Tangent of what angle is root 3? L. Okay, here's another one, base graph. What does the cosecant graph look like? Here's pi. Up, 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 down. So what's the limit as x approaches pi? Here's pi from the left. Infinity. Oh, see, but do you know what the problem is? Can you guys draw the graph? Yes. Yes. Well, we'll see you on <laughs> It's a race against time. Here, you know what? I could just slow down right now, and we could just finish it right at 3 o'clock. No, it's OK. Come by it. No, I don't think I could, because look at the time. It's just like, come on. OK, now this is, hey, wasn't this on a quiz? No, this was on the practice quiz. Well, for those of you who came in, yeah? 
OK, if I plug in 0 for x, you get 0 over 0. You've got to simplify. So first step, when you see fractions, you need to make a least common denominator, which is what? 4 times 3 plus x squared. What's going to go on the top? 4 minus that squared. Can I just multiply it out now? And when you divide by x, the x goes down here. Now what happens when you, here, let's just go one more step. What happens when you distributize this minus sign? You get five minus four minus four x minus x squared, r over four times two plus x, or two squared times x. And then two, 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 two. And then can I factor out an x over there? Yeah. So factor out the x and you get negative four minus x, all over four times two plus x quantity squared times x. The x cancels the x. Now can I plug in zero for x and get something? Negative four over two squared times four. 16, so negative one fourth. That was the same thing, yeah? Okay, number two. Did you guys notice like it's the same problems? So did we get better at it? You don't answer me. Yes. Just a guy like talking to myself. Okay. <laughs> Okay, graph. Okay, okay. So here you got to draw the graph. So what does that mean? Points are coming off. <laughs> when x is less than negative one, look, this is a line. Plug in negative one. What do you get? Plug in negative one. You get one, and the slope is one. So it's like that. Now this is a parabola opening downward, right? Between negative one and one. Those would be the x-intercepts. So wouldn't it be like that? And then this one, natural log x, like what is natural log of 1? 0, so it doesn't look like that, right? Okay, let's answer the question. What is the limit as x approaches negative 1? Well, here's negative 1, coming from the left and the right. Is it going toward the same point? No, the limit does not exist. B, what's the limit as x approaches 1? Coming from the left and the right, is it going toward the same point? And what's the y coordinate of that point? This is child's play. Now, in addition to these problems now, don't forget, like, you know the quiz that you just did? Guarantee I'm going to ask you, like, is this function continuous? And then I'm going to ask you why. And then, no, we'll practice that right after. Okay, don't worry, don't worry. Okay, so here's a function, sine 2x over x. Find the limit as x approaches 0. That's the first one. Hmm. 0 over 0. Use the Look for friend. Now, do you want to use the double angle identity, or you want to do that sine box over box thing? Box over okay, now, since that's 2x, that means I'm going to need 2x on the bottom. So multiply top and bottom by 2. Sine box over box. Now, is that friend, though? As x approaches 0, is the box getting closer to 0? Yeah. Yes, so that's friend, that's going to 1, so what's 2 times 1? 2. Two. <laughs> Just use double angle identity then. Next one, what's the limit as x approaches pi over 2 of sine 2x over x? Well, what happens when you plug in the number? Plug in the number and you get? 0 over pi over 2, which is 0, so that's the answer. If you can plug in the number and get something, that's the answer. Okay, next one. What is the limit as x approaches 3 pi over 4 of sine 2x over x? Well, plug in 3 over 4, and what do you get? What's 2 times 3 pi over 4? And sine of 3 pi over 2 is negative 1 over 3 pi over 4. So that's the answer, but then you simplify it. Negative 4, Negative four over 3 pi. And then finally, let's just do it over here. What is the limit as x approaches infinity of sine 2x over x? So again, same concept. This oscillates between negative 1 and 1. But what happens when you keep dividing it by bigger and bigger numbers? What? It gets closer, it gets closer and closer to 0 because the amplitude is getting smaller. <laughs> <laughs> Absent. <laughs> so weird. <laughs>
<laughs> Does he always do that? Is that like normal for him? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Hey, this looks like the one on the test. Right there. Oh, gave it away. Well, pretty much everything on here is like the test right there. Okay, find the value of k. This is just like the thing on the quiz, right? So that it will be continuous. See, this, see, if you were to graph this, there would be a removable discontinuity when x is 2. So, how do you make it become continuous? This number here has to be the y coordinate of that point. So you fill it in. So, how do I figure out the y coordinate of that point? You take the limit as x approaches 2 of this function here. Because doesn't the limit give you the y coordinate of the point that it's approaching? Okay, so here, I'm not going to rewrite everything. What we need to do is we need to take the limit as x approaches 2 of this monstrosity. Okay, so it's 0 over 0. I see a radical. So what? Multiply by conjugate. So all you got to do is just make sure you do your algebra correctly. So what happens when I multiply this out? You're going to get 5x minus 1 minus 2x plus 5. And please put the parentheses there. Because then you got to distribute that minus sign. And that becomes what? 3x <coughs> minus 6. And then you can factor out a 3. Is that good? Yes, because x minus 2 can See, if nothing is canceling out, that must mean you did something wrong. So this is what's left. I don't know why I'm writing it all. But I just will. Okay, this is what's left after you cancel out everything. So now can I plug in 2 and get something? Yes, 3 over square root of 10 minus 1 is 3. The square root of 4 plus 5 is 3. What's 3 over 6? 1 half. And then number five. Find the values of A and B so that this function will be continuous. So where do the first two pieces meet when x is what? So if they're going to actually meet, then the two y coordinates got to be the same. So if I plug in negative 1 here and negative 1 there, you have to get the same value. So what? Plug in negative 1. Plug in negative 1 here. Okay. And then where do the second and third pieces meet? At 1, right? You've got to look at this thing over here. So if I plug in 1 here and 1 there, you've got to get the same number. So plug in 1 here. A plus B. And that's got to equal to plug in 1 here. 0. And then are you guys capable of solving this? Look, look, so easy. Line them up and add 2a equal negative 1, a equal negative half. Take that and plug it back into either one of these to get b. I think you can do that, yeah? This child's play. Okay, number six. This is just like the one we had yesterday, except it got kicked up a notch, yeah? Or no? It didn't even get kicked, get kicked up a notch. Find the values of a, b, and c so that the limit of this function as x approaches infinity is equal to 0. Now, what does that mean? As the graph is going up to the right, the y coordinates are getting closer to 0. The horizontal asymptote is y equals 0. So, how do you get a horizontal asymptote of y equals 0? The power on the bottom got to be bigger than the top. So, the power on the bottom is 1, right? The highest power. So therefore, the power on the top got to be smaller than that. Zero. So a, therefore, a got to be 0, right? A has to be 0. In other words, you can't have that term. Because if you did have it, then the horizontal asymptote would be a over 1. Because the powers would be the same. OK. The next clue says the limit of this function as x approaches 1 from the left is negative infinity. What does that mean? That means here's 1. Coming from the left, it's going down toward negative infinity. That means the vertical asymptote is what? 
No. One. X equals one. No, X equals one. Now, how the heck do you get a vertical asymptote? That's when the denominator is zero. So that means you're going to need an x minus one in the denominator. So therefore, c must be? I need an x minus one in the negative denominator. One. C has to be negative one. OK, so this is what I got right now. And then the last clue is the easiest one. f of four equals one. That means if I plug in four for x, you will get one. OK, plug in four for x there, what do you get? B over 3, that has to equal 1. I think we can figure out B. Yeah? Okay, let me just write it for you. 3. And this problem looks like the last problem on the test right here. Okay, f of x equals x squared. A. Find the average rate of change from x equals 2. Now again, average rate of change you don't need calculus, you just compute the slope. From 2 to what? 5. When x is 2, what's the y coordinate? Plug it in. And then when x is 5, what is y? And then just compute slope. And please, go y minus y over x minus x. No, you're not the only one. There are like three people that went x minus x over y minus y. 21 over 3, 7. B, find the instantaneous rate. Okay, this is the hardest problem probably for all of you. How do you find the instantaneous rate of change or the slope of the tangent line? You have to do the difference quotient. So what do you do? At when? X equals what? At X equals 3. So what? F of 3 plus H minus F of 3. I'm not going to give you the formula like I did on the quiz. And then you got to take the limit as H approaches 0. Now on this quiz, a lot of people did not write that limit as h approaches zero. If you don't write that on the test, minus three or minus four? Five then. <laughs> and this morning you write now. You've got to have it. You've got to at least write it once to satisfy me. Although I would rather see it in every step because that's what it's supposed to be. Okay, so limit. How can you guys be so lazy? Like when you, for your homework, I told you, I don't care what you do as a homework, but when you put it on your paper, it's got to be like correct mathematics for the AT readers. Okay, f of 3 plus h, that means substitute 3 plus h into the function. Minus f of 3, plug in 3 into the function. And then divide the whole critter by h. And is that 0 over 0? Yes. yes, it's always 0 over 0 when you do this thing here. And so... It's indeterminate, so I'm going to simplify, so multiply out the top. And please multiply it out correctly. The nines cancel out. I can factor out an H. See how I do correct mathematics? <laughs> no, for real. I would think that if your teacher is doing it correctly, you would do it correctly too, right? If your teacher takes shortcuts, then you can take shortcuts. Now can I plug in zero for H? Yes, and what do you get? Now watch. The answer is 6. Every single year, I see this next step. It says limit h approaches 0, 6. No. When you actually plug in the number for h, then you're applying the limit. The answer is just 6. This is the slope of the tangent line. That, that's what it is. Okay. So here, let me show you what's going on. Some of you are kind of... Here is the graph of y equals x squared. When x equals 3, right here. If you were to write the equation of the tangent line, right there, what is the slope of it? Six. That's what the instantaneous rate is. It tells you the slope of the tangent line. Or you guys in physics, the instantaneous velocity. Okay, part C. Write the equation of the tangent line when x is three. Now, when x is three, how do I figure out what the y coordinate is? Like you plug it in there and you get nine. So, if you know the slope and the point, just do point slope form. Is this the class where some people are still doing y equal mx plus b? No, it was the other class. I don't want to mention any names. <laughs> D, write the equation of the normal line. Here's the normal line. It's perpendicular. So it's going to be the same thing as this, except the slope is going to be the negative reciprocal of that one. OK, and then here's the good part. At what other point does the normal line intersect the curve? Now look, here's the normal line, look. 
If you keep on going, it hits the parabola right there at this other point. That's what I want you to find. What is that other point? The only reason I put this on this worksheet and the last one is because I saw this problem on the AP exam on the multiple choice. Okay, so how do I find where these two graphs intersect? Just look. Here's the equation of the parabola, and where's the line? Y minus 9. And remember, we're using the normal line. Make sure you use the right one. Huh? Here's the normal line. How do I figure out where two graphs intersect? Yeah, it's called substitution. So since y equals this, I can substitute that for y. And then you just solve this equation. Now, when I solve equations on the board, I like to do it efficiently because some of you, I know you guys would distribute at minus one six, yeah? I know. Wouldn't it be easier to just multiply both sides by six to get rid of the fractions and then distributize the negative one like that? Yes or no? Yes. Okay, and then it's a quadratic equation, so you gotta make one side zero. See how I always make my first term positive? Because just in case you've got to use quadratic formula, or even when you factor, some of you have problems. You know? That's why I make the first term positive. Plus x, bring it over, minus 57. Now, is this factorable, or do you have to use the quadratic formula? Yes. It has to be factorable. In fact, if you're smart, is it 6 and 1, or 3 and 2? Okay, we're not thinking. We're not thinking, okay? It's six and one! You know why? Because look, we already know, look, here's the line, here's the parabola. We know it intersects at that point already, right? So doesn't three have to be an answer? So that means x minus three gotta be one of the factors. We don't think like that, Mr. Park. We just like to do, we like to reinvent the wheel. <laughs> and then if that's minus three, then what times negative three will give you negative 57? Plus 19. And does that, just double check, does that work? Is negative 18 and positive 19 equal to positive one x? Yeah. So here are your two answers, negative 19 over six and three. Now, we already know they intersect, uh, intersect the three, so we want the other point, that's this one. So this point is negative 19 over six. How do I figure out the y coordinate? Squared. You can either plug it into this one or that one. Squared. I think I'd rather plug it into that one. Right? Now, does everybody know 19 squared is 361? No. How do we not know our square numbers up to 20 at least? And then 36, cancel the 36, so you just get one over blank. <laughs> if math were only, well, math would be so easy if you could just make up your own stuff. Fine. Okay, last thing. Okay, now, you, you know the quiz you just, just took? There's going to be some problems from there, so I'm, I'm just going to go over them now, even though we just got it back. But I don't want you to make those mistakes. I'll we'll just do a real simple one. Give me some numbers. Two, three, five. Three, four, seven. No, let's go down. Let's go down. Four, two, one. Okay. Okay. We know how to do average rate of change. Estimate. Okay, what was I just talking about? Okay, is there a value of C between 2 and 5 such that F of C equals 1.7? Is that going to throw you off? Yeah. And then explain. Okay, so the answer is yes, because the intermediate value theorem, good enough. <laughs> because look, if you were to draw the graph, you've got to understand this. When x, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. When x is 2, what's the y-coordinate? 4, 2, 3, 4. When x is 5, the y-coordinate is 1. 
to get from 4 to 1, don't you have to hit 1.7 along the way? That's the intermediate value theorem. And you have to mention this theorem by name. Now, some of you didn't do it on the quiz. That was minus 1 on the test. Minus 3. That's okay, Mr. Park. 97 is a darn good score. Okay, then you're going to get a piecewise function. Give me a number. Okay, x is less than 2, x is greater than or equal to 2. Give me a function. x squared plus 1. And then this one's going to be x cubed minus 3. Is this function continuous at x equal 2? No, 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 no. I'm going to change this. Give me another number besides 3. Any number except 3. 4. Okay. Is this function continuous at x equal 2? How do you tell? If you plug in 2 here and 2 there, do you get the same number? No. If I plug in 2 here, you get 5. If you plug in 2 there, you get 4. No, so that means it goes like that, right? So the answer is no. Okay, then explain. Why is this function not continuous at x equal 2? Because the limit of this function as x approaches 2 is no it is not equal to f of two. Of course. Now some of you <laughs> like you guys like you don't, you don't even put you just put limit x approach. Where the, you gotta pack this? It's like you guys are just making up your own stuff. And what if it is continuous? It does. Equal. Then they are equal. You guys gotta learn what you need to write to get the points of the AP exam. In this case, it's not continuous, so not equal to. Okay, so are we done? No, we can't be 20 minutes early. Let's play a game then. Okay, I'll tell you what. I'll tell you what. I am the number one person in Hawaii on quiz of for world capitals. Okay. No. No, I just said world capitals. No, no, you don't challenge me. Okay, you name three countries. If I can name all three capitals, you gotta state the three o'clock. Oh, wow. But if I cannot, then you can go. Madagascar. And Tananarivo. No, 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 the hardest control. Wait, wait, wait. So you gotta figure out which is the ones Mr. Park doesn't know. What are the ones that are on quiz of? <laughs> no, it's gotta be world capitals now. It's gotta be an actual country. It can't be like <laughs> Not a country. <laughs> it has to be an official a country? country in yes. the United yes. Nations. It's I don't, I don't. Nation. Djibouti. Djibouti. No. That's so easy. <laughs> <laughs> because it's Djibouti. <laughs> okay. Is it? I don't know. You guys better no. think. Let me check it. It is a country. Of course. Yeah, I know Djibouti. Oh, sea land is not no, a country. Is. <laughs> <laughs> You're thinking of Iceland. You're thinking of Iceland. <laughs> no, no, sea no. land is not a country. <laughs> Where is it then? Sea um, land. <laughs> You're thinking of sea world. Oh, no. <laughs> it's been termed a micronation, perhaps the world's smallest, about 10 kilometers off That's the Polish coast. Um, <laughs> this world War II sea fort was <laughs> Oh, I know. Occupied in 1967. No, sorry. <laughs> oh, wait, want to give me the, mic the Federated States of Micronesia? No. Oh. You yeah, obviously know it. <laughs> yeah, it's all here. Come on, come on. Put your heads together. <laughs> Put your heads together. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this is stressful.
He knows what he is. He knows what he is. I'm pretty sure he knows everything in Africa. No, I don't know. Okay, I'm good at Africa, I'll just tell you. Oh, that. shit. Yeah. Yeah. I'm good at Africa. Okay. 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 So, but there are some times, though, I, like, I get the countries confused and I get mixed up. Especially in the really small countries, like. It's a republic. You know, the small ones. <laughs> That's wrong. You know, like Burundi. Is a republic a country? Like the Republic of Congo. But not that. But or the Democratic Republic <laughs> of Congo. What you, you don't want to ask me though. What about like... Come on, by the time you get asked, you're pretty far. Come on. No, I'll give oh, you... What, what about this? Okay, I'll give you 45 seconds to ask me a question. Oh, like this one? Okay, wait, can, oh, yeah. just, like, can I just say one? <laughs> no, I've never heard of this. <laughs> Wait, wait, they're having, they have, they're having one right here. Do you know what I say something here. Wait, can we say that? Oh, oh I just looked at that one. Do you think he'd know that? He knows all. That's Africa. I feel like he would. Yeah, I feel like he would. Oh, do you know? It's like, who would think that it is? What about this one? I don't know, that's crazy. Do you know what that is? Which one would not appear in the business? Well, I don't know. I don't play quizzes. Okay, okay, I'll tell you. I have difficulty with the ones, so, you know, in the, like, o in the ocean. Ocean like countries. Like <laughs> <laughs> Wait, is there cameras like recording? Like tiny island nations. Did you want me to stop this? <laughs> no, no. Oh. <laughs> He's tricking us. Okay, 10 seconds. Say anything. Yes. Do, do that. Yeah, nothing. <laughs> yeah, you got nothing to lose. Anglo Koskian. <laughs> that's, that's not a country. <laughs> I don't know where you get in your Sea land. What about okay. Nagorno Karabakh? That's not a that's not a country either. Liechtenstein. Liechtenstein. No. We did it, right? We did it before. <laughs> Just for that? No! no. <laughs> I don't even know how to spell it. Wittgenstein, <laughs> could it possibly be Vaduz? Shit! <laughs> <laughs> no. 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 Okay, you guys can go. Vaduz, <laughs> Vaduz. That's correct, right? Yeah. <laughs>